Hi, this is Bill Mara. My call sign is N2CQR, and I work on the Solder Smoke podcast with Pete Giuliano. Pete has been involved in bringing what he calls tribal knowledge to the Solder Smoke podcast, and I'm really grateful for that. And I recently got some tribal knowledge from Pete, and he suggested that I follow up on it by doing a video, because sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words, and I guess a video is worth about a million. Um, my problem was that I was working for the first time with a fairly large heat sink. I'm building a solid state HF amplifier that's going to put out about 140 watts. It's the Communications Concepts Incorporated EB63A amplifier. It's got two transistors in the final. They develop quite a lot of heat, so you need a heat sink. Actually, the amplifier board is pretty much built, well, it's built here. The board is affixed to the heat sink, and then the transistors are actually bolted to the sink, and then they go through these holes onto the board. So you have the board, anyway, I'm, I'm not showing you this here. You have the board, this is the board, the heat sink, heat sink, board go together, and the transistors are on the, on the heat sink through these two holes. Now, to do this, you have to do something called tap and die. The, you can drill holes in the aluminum, but then you have to put the little threads in there so that you can screw in the screws, especially the screws needed to hold the two transistors down. And I've done a lot of drilling of holes in aluminum, but I've never done the die part, the tap part, where you put the, the threads to, so that you can screw screws in. We're using 4-40 type screws. And I sent away, and I'll show you a little bit now, what you need to complete this project. And as I go through it, I'll tell you about the tribal knowledge that Pete imparted along the way. All right, obviously the heat sink, the board itself, very important. Some 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil. Then, I sent away, but these are pretty commonly available, this uh, Vermont American tap and drill combo. Basically just a drill bit of the appropriate size for 440. And this is the, the device that actually puts the, uh, puts the threads when you screw it in into the, into the aluminum. This is the part that really causes a lot of trouble and I'll describe it here in a second. Got a box of 440 screws of various sizes. Anyway, what you have to do is First, you figure out where you want your holes. In this case, I used the board as a template, marked them. Then I went through with a drill, drilled the holes in there. In this case, I drew, drew, drilled in the four holes to hold the board down. And here comes the tricky part. At that point, you're supposed to take this thing, put it in the hole, and then just start screwing it in. Now, Pete warned me. He said that these things are fragile and you can break them. And he told me to make sure I use some three-in-one oil, and I did. So far, so good. Then he told me to only do about three turns in and then to pull it out, and then to go back in. That I didn't do. I just sat there, and I started cranking on this thing, and it was screwing in, and I was thinking everything was fine, and I was wrong. Because on one of these holes that I'm no longer using, as I was turning it using this little device, you could buy this device, this is supposedly to help you turn it, and that it does. So put this thing in there. And so I'm in there, turning away. Everything is good, and all of a sudden, a very disheartening sound. Crack! This thing breaks. Not only that, it breaks so that half of it is stuck in there, and you can't get it out. It's really bad. So I remember what Pete told me. And uh, I actually stupidly then took the, the nub of what was left and tried to see if I could use that on some of the other holes, and I broke one in there too, so I broke it twice. Anyway, back to, to Amazon, I've ordered another set from Vermont American, and uh, anyway, that's we're back now, and I'm happy to report that I was able to get four holes for the board in there. What the center punch does is it prevents your drill from wandering around when you're, um, when you're gonna try to get it in there. It's very important, especially on these holes, where you want the hole to be precisely 
where the uh, the hole for the transistor is going to be. It's all going to be lined up very very carefully. So I'll um, I'll demonstrate now how to use the center punch. Now, like I said, I went out and bought a fancy center punch, but it didn't seem to work out. I just rummaged around in the uh, in the junk box and I found this old steel drill with a sharp point, and that's all you really need. And what you do is very carefully place this thing right in the center, hence center punch, of where you want the drill hole to go, and then whack I whack it with the hammer a couple times. I'm sure there are purists out there who don't like this technique, but heck, it works for me. Then I go to the second hole, make sure it's right there in the center, or else the transistor's not going to be lined up nicely. See here. Looks okay. All right, see, you can hit it in there. It's actually indenting it pretty good. Two more. Exciting, eh? I told Pete that I really like this because you get that smell of three in one oil on your hands. You get to hit things with a hammer. You get, you get to feel like you're really making something here. All right, now I'm going to use the, uh, the drill bit that came with the Vermont American set and put these holes in here. I don't know why, but it seems like it would be a good idea to put a little drop of oil there in each of the spots. And you, can, you can see how that center punch hole... Yeah, you see how that drill bit goes in there? That's good. one. Alright, so now comes the tricky part. The hazardous part. The part that I really messed up before. And if I mess it up this time, it's not going to be not going to be good because well, I've got everything lined up. I've got most of the holes done. Problem is, this thing is fragile. You can't twist it too much. First of all, I would forget about using this thing. Puts way too much torque on it. Hand tighten it. The other thing I did is, Pete told me that it's best to do this with a, like a, a bench, with a, like a drill press so you can hold it straight down. Some guys with the drill press will bring it down and then they won't actually use the electric motor in the drill. They'll just hand turn it, but the drill press keeps everything aligned because this thing doesn't respond too well to being out of alignment. Um, any kind of lateral motion tends to make it break. But I was thinking about this and I, I don't have a drill press, but I came up with a little device that I think helps keep it straight. I just took a piece of scrap wood and drilled in a hole of two diameters. This one's smaller on this end, this one's bigger because this thing's smaller here and then bigger here. So you put that thing through, use a lot of oil. Oil is your friend here. Put a drop, a couple, several drops in the hole. This thing you can see limits the amount of lateral movement, helps keep things lined up, I think. Anyway, it works for me. So I put this thing, it's in the hole now, and you begin to turn very slightly, just with your fingers. And you got to keep a sense how much pressure you're putting on there. It's going in, but as soon as it starts getting tight, like that, see how it's getting tight? Back out. Back out, take it off. And you can see the thread starting to go in there, but you got to do quite a bit more. I always hit it with more oil. I think one of the benefits of taking it out, you get some more oil in there. And then you go back in like here, put it back in the hole, the guide down there, back in there, screw it in, easier at first. Now again you can give a little bit of pressure, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit still going okay. Time to bring it out. Take off whatever material came out. He told me you got to get the little bits of metal that come out. I'm going to tighten this thing up a bit. More oil. Again. Back in we go. Get 
gets tight, back it out. Take off the material. Another shot of oil. You can see we're getting deeper and deeper into the aluminum. And the threads are definitely going in there. Starts getting tight again. You don't want to, you don't want to really force it. It's hard to describe, <laughs> but having broken one, you kind of get a feel for it. Uh, anyway, now you're starting to get deeper in there. I'm feeling like the same tension all the way through. So this time I think it's hard to describe, but I think we're done with this hole. Take it out. Now to confirm that you're really done, I like to take a little piece of little 440 screw, suitable length, not too long. Looks like looks good. Put it there. Start winding it in. Yeah, but it grabs grabs the threads real nice. Little Phillips head here. Look at that. Perfect. All the way in. Voila. That's it. There's some tribal knowledge. So again, I think the main points. Get yourself this little kit. Get some 440 screws. Be careful with this thing. Take your time. This little rig I worked out seems to be a pretty good substitute, but I think probably a drill, drill press would be better. And then um, I'm going to turn off the video and uh, go through and do the other the other holes. And I think we're mission accomplished here, but I just want to show you how it all comes together. I've got all four holes for the board in, and I've got the four holes for the transistors. And I'll just put a couple of screws here to hold the board down. It won't actually go in this way. You'll have to have a little bit of space. Put spacers in there, but this is just to see if the holes are aligned properly, I hope. So that holds the board down. Now here are the transistors, MRF45s. Nice looking things. Get another case. Look at that, they're beautiful or what? They go in right like that. They sit there like that. It looks to me like the holes are lined up properly. So you can see how that's going to go right onto the heat sink there and uh, soak up all that nasty heat. I'm just doing a couple of screws here. All right, a couple of final notes here I wanted to just wrap up. Um, first, I wanted to show you how the thing looks right now. This is the uh, completed board, and it's mounted on the heat sink very solidly. Got some spacers in there so that the circuitry is not shorting out to the board. I think it's pretty cool, pretty solid looking. Almost reminds me of working on tube type gear. It's very three dimensional. Um, one thing Pete pointed out. I'm glad he did. I am. Well, and and it'd be, I, I asked him about this, and he, you know, when you one of the things you have to do is, especially when you're mounting transistors onto a board like this, after you finish all your drilling and tapping, you've got little burrs inevitably come up here on the sides of the holes. These are th these are some of my earlier failed holes, and I was talked to Pete. I said, you know, I know you got to deburr them, and I asked him for 
some tribal knowledge on how to do that and he said just take a drill bit and you just kind of gently by hand go in there and you can see it look at that taking up taking up the burrs let's do that a couple times don't do it too much you don't want to, <laughs> to re-drill the thing you go like that and you de burr it wipe away the aluminum that way when you put the transistors in through the holes you get a nice nice uh, metal to metal connection I put a little bit of um, heat sink compound in there of course and so those transistors are very firmly mounted there now um, the whole thing it's going to go together something like this. this is an old chassis I have an old box and so this will mount like in there and then this board is going to be for the low pass filters Steve Smith will be happy to hear me say that <laughs> so I'm going to build um, the low pass filters for various bands probably this way Sh switches that Pete gave me will be used for different things and I'm going to switch the low pass filters with these nice 12 volt double pole double throw relays so initially I'm going to build one for 17 and then all the other bands and then I'll be able to switch them all the other bands that I use I'll be able to switch them from the front panel and uh, anyway that's it fun project picked up a lot of tribal knowledge thanks very much to uh, Pete Giuliano and 6QW 7-3 guys